Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about external cause codes. So what are external cause codes? Basically, this is the reason that an injury occurred and it's wrapped up in a nice little package of a code. So um, I have done a video previously about this in Fracture Diagnosis Coding 101. I talk about external cause codes, but very briefly, so say for example, a patient slipped and fell and sprained their ankle, okay? That slip and fall is obviously going to be that external cause code. So you're always going to have your, your injury code and you're going to have your external cause code. How did it happen? And this is important because just in case this is related to like a car accident or maybe a workman's comp claim, all of that diagnosis codes are all there like they should be. So there's also these other little Y codes. They start with the Y, um, basically like activity or place of occurrence. Those are only going to be on your initial visits, okay? On your subsequent visits, the only diagnoses you're going to be picking up are your injury or injuries and then your external causes, external cause or external causes. So there's sometimes there's multiple reasons why an injury occurred. So you would always pick up those external cause codes for those situations. And make sure that um, when you're reviewing documentation that everything is always complete. This is why it's so important to make sure that the, all those details are all covered and, and make sure that it's all there. So I've seen some pretty interesting external cause codes, like one is struck by a snail. So it's like, hmm, <laughs> it's like, how slow are you going that you would be struck by a snail? But, <laughs> but you know, uh, if you, I guess, are mowing the grass and you're like on one of those little riding lawnmowers, you can, you can get hit by a snail or if you're, you know, weed eating, you know, you can also get hit by flying snails too, because if you chop off weeds and they just go flying everywhere. That, that's another reason why you could get struck by a snail. It's not that you're going slow. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, you get some very interesting um, diagnosis codes with uh, external causes. So my suggestion to you would be to review the external cause code section of the ICD-10 book and just look at it and look at all the codes that are available. There are kind of funny. <laughs> some of them will crack you up. But um Sometimes you may have to think of a different word to use if you're trying to look for an external cause code. I've seen people get frustrated because they look at, they try to look up the word hit and like hit a wall if if the patient maybe hit a wall with their hand and they can't find it. And it was like, how do I find it? You you don't use hit, you use strike. They were striking a wall. Um or if something hit them, you would say struck by. So that's another way to look up um, your external cause codes. So sometimes if you're not able to find a, um, a code that way, you just kind of have to think of a, just a different word to say the same thing so that you can find the code. So I know it gets a little confusing, but after a while, when you, when you get used to it, you'll start to, it'll start to be like, oh yeah. Um, or if they twisted themselves, like they were twisting, that's overexertion. You can look up overexertion um, and then find it that way too. So um, that's just a, just a tip from me to you. <laughs> uh, but yes, that's, that's basically what external cause codes are. And, and they're always paired with the injury codes because, you know, the, it's just a description of, of how, how did it happen? So that's just making for more complete diagnosis coding. You know, you always want to be as specific as possible. That is the thing with medical coding is you got to be as specific as you can. So, and those external cause codes are, are a part of that. So if you have any more questions on external cause codes, like specific questions, just let me know and I can do another video about that. Um, so I'm still getting like a lot of questions and sometimes I don't know if people want the questions answered right away or if they want them on um, Q&A Tuesday. But I am going to respond uh, to some of those questions and then save some of the questions for Q&A Tuesday as well. So <laughs> that'll be there. So if you submit a question, you may get the answer twice. So, <laughs> but it's great because you never know who else might have the same question. So 
you know and i and i never call out anybody's name either so so don't feel like i'm gonna be like oh yes this person asked this no 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 i, I wouldn't do that to you unless you wanted me to then just let me know hey give me a shout out and i'll be like okay yeah sure <laughs> but yes uh don't worry it's all just you know Hey, you know, just ask a good question. And of course, I will put my email down in the description box. So that way you can um, just shoot an email privately if you need to ask a question and you don't want to post it in the comments below. So that's always an option too. So anyway, this is going to be a very quick video tonight because I have some running around to do and I have a function to attend. So... I am going to close this out, but if you guys have any questions, please keep them coming, and I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for, for just letting me be a part of you guys' journey, and uh, I really appreciate it. So if you are a medical coder, a medical coding student, or a provider, or a nurse, or just somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, as told by me, Blue the Coder, Please like and subscribe and I will see y'all on the next video. Bye.